In this video, we'll take a look at how to customize your brushes and place them into custom palettes in Corel Painter 12. So these are some custom palettes I have here of brushes uh, that are mostly standard brushes, um, but some of them have a few settings changed here and there. Um, but they're all really just the brushes that I use most of the time. Here and there I might find a brush that I, I might want for an occasional project, but for the most part I do 99% of all my work with these brushes here. And then the thing about Painter is there's so many brushes you might get kind of overwhelmed at first and not even know what to use, but after a while if you experiment a little bit you'll start to see some brushes work better for some things than others, and some you know generally aren't really that useful. Um, but we'll take a look at how you can customize these brushes and then put them into custom palettes. So uh, I have a digital airbrush here that I've changed some settings for. I like to I like to have my opacity low on uh, my airbrush so that it builds up slowly like this because if you were to crank it up to a hundred percent and then paint with it it's gonna build up a lot faster and it doesn't really work like an airbrush anymore so I have it set to where it's just always at a low opacity and I also have it calibrated um, and calibration is the sensitivity of your pen um, it determines how uh, thick or how wide your stroke is going to be depending on how hard you press down. You can get to the brush calibration menu through the window menu, brush control panel, so then it's all the way at the bottom. And if you if you enable it here and then you click on this little sub dialog, you can use this scratch pad to change some settings. So if you push down uh, really hard here and you go to OK, when you use a brush, you'll have to press down really, really hard to get it to build up. See how it builds up lightly? And then now it's building up thicker. Pushing down pretty hard here, and it's not building up very fast. If I change these settings to the opposite, now it doesn't really matter. It's going to build up pretty fast no matter what. So I like to calibrate some of these brushes. Uh, the square chalk in particular is one where I want it to build up slowly because it gets this paper texture here a lot better um, if you don't build it up too quick like that. So this is one that I have calibrated where I push down really hard here and then click OK and then that way when I paint with it uh, it takes a lot of pressure to get it to deposit really thick like this. That's how I like it to perform. Um, so you can calibrate brushes, you can change their size and their opacity and all these other settings if you want to go in and play around with all this stuff uh, to see what it does. Um, you can also change the overall performance of a brush. For instance, we have this airbrush that performs like this now, but if I were to change some settings, maybe change the brush type to uh, let's say palette knife well there you go it's not even working like an airbrush anymore now it's just become a palette knife um, and these are some pretty under the hood settings but you can get some pretty interesting results you can almost make your own brushes there's so many combinations here uh, you'd be surprised at what you can get but I have this set certain way so that even if I do change some settings and really mess up the whole thing I can always click on this original saved brush and it'll go back to the settings that I like. So I'll show you how you can make some of these brushes. The first thing we should look at is the different types of brushes. You have these brush categories here so these are a lot of different groupings of similar brushes and then with the, within these groupings or these categories you have a bunch of different brushes that are all fairly similar. Some do different things. Some might be erasers and blenders and some might be uh, brushes, but they have similar properties. And if you wanted to, you could tweak these uh, a little bit. So let's say uh, we want to uh, make a variant, which is what it's called, of this digital airbrush. So we want to make a copy of it, but change a couple settings so that it performs a little bit differently. What we can do is we can click on this little submenu here after we've selected the brush that we want to copy. And we can go to Save Variant. And we'll give it a name. We'll call it Pixel Airbrush. And we're going to save it in the Airbrushes category. Go to Save. 
and then after you've created a variant it's always going to end up at the bottom of your list here in your in the category that you saved it in so I'll click on pixel airbrush and I haven't changed any settings yet so it's not going to perform differently this is just a copy of that brush but now after I've made a copy I'm going to change some settings so I'm going to go to general and I'm going to go to dab type and change it to pixel airbrush and I'm going to paint with it a little bit Let's see if I like these settings I think I do and what we'll do now if we want to save this as a, a permanent brush that we can recall at any time with these settings uh, you have to have the brush selected in your menu here highlighted and then you hold down shift on your keyboard and while holding down shift you tap and drag with your pen or click with your mouse and drag and you pull the brush out of that palette see how I, I dragged it and now it's free floating here on its own and then just let it go anywhere on your canvas here and now you'll instantly create a palette and you'll create this brush so now if I go to another brush and I paint and I click back on this pixel airbrush here you can see I've got these exact same settings and if I go back to my original brush my digital airbrush it performs how it did before and then that way I didn't mess up any of my original brushes so what's important is you have to copy the brush that you're going to base your new brush off of first save it as a variant and then change the settings and then make a brush out of it so I'll do that one more time before we get into how to arrange these palettes so you can see how to do this let's uh, let's play around with one of these sponges let's get a sponge like this uh, fine sponge here so by default this is how this sponge works which is great but maybe we want to change some settings uh, so what we'll do is we'll make a copy of this brush by clicking on the sub dialog here with the brush selected that we want to copy and go to save variant and let's call this uh, test sponge just for the heck of it and we'll go to save select our test sponge here from the bottom of our category here and then let's say that we want to make our opacity much lower we'll have it always be 9 uh, we'll go to brush calibration here and we'll set some calibration settings and we'll make it so that it deposits slowly so now you can see this is how it works compared to how it worked before you get an entirely different brush and this would be a much better brush for if you were doing texture on rocks and, and different things but the other version of the brush the original might be better for trees and bushes so you can see you get a lot of different effects now again if we want to uh, copy that sponge to our palette we get it selected here we hold down shift and we drag anywhere onto the canvas don't try to drag it into your palette if you've already got palettes because sometimes that doesn't work just drag it over here on its own it's alright if it makes a new new palette that's okay and then uh, from that point hold shift and drag and then try to drag it into one of your palettes here and try to get it where you think you want it if you want to move it around you didn't get get it where you wanted it to be or you want to rearrange the palette you again can hold shift and then just drag the brush to where you want it to be and since the icons are the same on all of these I make sure that I keep everything in an order that I'll remember and you can hover over these brushes to see what they are but I have them kind of all arranged in a way that's logical to me um, I've got of course different palettes and I'll show you how to make these palettes in a minute I have different palettes that kind of have different categories but then I've also got uh, brushes that are kind of grouped together too some of these are distortion brushes which aren't really blenders per se but I use them in a kind of blending sense so these are kind of brushes that augment and then these are brushes that kind of I, I paint with and I add color with and of course I've got some watercolor ones that I don't really do a whole lot of watercolor painting but they're there in case I want them so now we'll take a look at how to manipulate these palettes a little bit more because you might not want this palette to be called custom 4 you might want to change the name so what you can do is you can go to your window menu and go to custom palette and go to the organizer and you'll have full control over all the names of your palettes and if there's palettes you don't want to keep you can delete them so in this case I don't want to keep this palette I'm just going to delete it and there we go it's done it's gone I don't want to keep this sponge either 
So I'm going to go to this sub dialog in the brushes selector, and I'm going to go to remove variant. And there we go, I've removed that variant. If you wanted to save these brushes or export them uh, as a library, you can go to export and you can export the brush, an individual brush, or you can export the, ca the category or the library, which is all your brushes. So if you have a whole bunch of different brushes that you've customized, uh, and you, you say you wanted to share them with somebody, um, you could export them as a file, and then they could go to import and import a, in part a particular brush or a whole library. And what I would recommend what would be easier is if you just go to workspace and then you export your workspace um, because not only will it save your brushes and all of your palettes and all of your settings, it'll also save your palette locations and all of your preferences and settings. It'll basically just save Painter the way that it is now, and then you'll be able to recall it to that same state later if you want to. Um, and if you're familiar with my videos, you'll know that I have a free workspace available that you can download if you want your workspace to look like mine and have all these brushes and settings and things. That way it'll be easier for you to follow along with my tutorials. We'll do it one more time just to kind of reiterate some of this stuff. So let's make another custom brush. Let's try one of these palette knives. So I'll go down to the uh, palette knife category and let's try impasto palette knife. Let's see how that works on its own. I'm gonna just delete some of this stuff here. So on its own the impasto palette knife doesn't seem to do anything actually. So maybe what it's meant to do is it's meant to blend. So let's play with some settings here. and Let's get it to do something else. Let's change it from artist oil to uh, projected and let's see what that does. Wow, that does something really weird. Wouldn't even expect it to do that. So now you've got some really crazy... Uh, I'm actually kind of surprised by this because I didn't think it was going to do that. Uh, this could be a really useful brush for something. I'm not really sure what, but this is actually pretty cool. So you can see you've got some different effects. I think I definitely want to save this brush because this is a pretty crazy brush. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this sub dialog here and I'm going to go to save variant and I'm going to call it crazy palette knife because I don't know what else to call it and go to save. And then if I want to put that in a palette, I'm going to hold shift after selecting the crazy palette knife, holding shift, dragging, still holding shift, and then release shift and my pen. And there you go, it's on its own. I'm going to hold shift again and drag it, and I'm going to put it, I guess, over here in my effects palette so it can live there. So now I can go back to a regular palette knife and paint with that, and that's fine. And any other brush. And now if I ever want this crazy palette knife again, I can click on it and there you go. I've got it with those same settings. And if I wanted to send that to somebody, if somebody said, hey, that's a cool brush, can you email that to me? Uh, I'll go, okay, here you go. I'll go to my sub dialog here, go to export brush. That'll export the brush as a file. And then you send the file to that person who wants it. They go to import, select brush, select the file, and then they'll instantly have this crazy palette knife in their palette knives category and they'll be able to paint with this brush. So you can really go through and have fun with all these settings. There's general settings here that do about a hundred thousand things and then there's another million and a half settings. I'm exaggerating a little bit but there are a lot of different settings in the brush control panels. Each of these uh, options has a ton of options within them so some of them are here. You can see Real Watercolor has a bunch of settings that pertain to the watercolor brush. There's Impasto settings. Impasto is this uh, kind of 3D effect that you get. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, there's size and spacing and angle. If we wanted to change the angle um, of this brush, you could. Or the size minimum size, all that stuff. So you can really tweak just about everything about these brushes. Uh, now if something happens and uh, you end up changing a brush permanently that you didn't mean to change, like for instance this impasto knife, 
I accidentally uh, did it in the wrong order where I forgot to copy the brush first and then change the settings. If you select uh, a base brush and then you change some settings, you're, you're going to change the settings of this brush uh, that, that you're on right now. So it's better to make a copy first. And I, again, I forgot to do that here. So now this impasto brush has been changed and it doesn't function as it's supposed to when it first comes with Painter. So if I wanted to change that back and, and reset its default setting, I can do that through this same submenu, and then I can just go to Restore Default Variant. And now this impasto brush works as it's supposed to. Remember before it didn't do anything? That's because it's just a blender brush, and this is how it's supposed to work. It's not supposed to do this craziness here. But if I wanted to get that back, I can go back to Crazy Palette Knife, and then there you go, now I've got it again, and I can go back and forth between the two. If I want to go back to the original Impasto Palette Knife, there we go, it's performing as it should. So if you mess something up, uh, it's just as easy to uh, put it back to normal by going to the submenu here, and then going to Restore Default Variant. And if you mess up the whole category, you can do Restore All Default Variants, but that's going to restore all of your default settings for all these brushes. You might not want to do that. Um, but again, if you're uncertain, uh, go to Window here, and Workspace, and Export your Workspace, and that'll save your whole workspace and all of your brushes, and that way if you do ever mess something up, you can always get it back to how it was, how you liked it. So anyways, I hope that makes it a little more clear as to how to modify some of this stuff in Painter. And if you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to comment on this video. And if you think this video was helpful, click the like button uh, or share it on Facebook or something. And that way it'll be easier for other artists out there to find this information. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for my next video.